a lot of times it just goes black. Oh, bro, you talk a lot of shit, eh? Go, Mana, go! It's always fun to get over the line. Even the cops are honking. We all took them direct and free ball the shit out of them. We'll go out there and die for each other. Electric. It's electric. It's electric in Quincy, Massachusetts right now. Boston sports culture doesn't really accept second place, does it? The New York-New England sports rivalry speaks for itself, but these are two teams that when they square off, man, is it fun to watch. New England's been breaking records with wins this year. New York is 8-1 on the road. All signs point to that this should be an awesome contest. New England hosts their first ever playoff fixture facing their rival New York in what promises to be a bruising Eastern Conference final. As tight as a boxer's glove, some would say. Wide ball. Milan turns it to Waka back in the inside. Bobby Waka near the line. Waka is over. He's a wizard. And New England score the first try in this Eastern Conference final. It is outstanding from the men in red. The last game against New York was, was really a tough one to take. I mean, it's, it's one of our better rivals. 70 minutes, I think we were, we were still uh, 10 points ahead. Um, and you know, some things, sometimes things like a yellow card and a couple little uh, decision-making errors go against you. Waka with a lovely step. <laughs> Waka on the outside, looking to go himself. He puts a stab in and gets crunched as the ball sits up. For Fassi Fuertai, Waka's down injured. The most bizarre scene we've seen, it's a yellow card for Regan O'Gorman, who put his shoulder in. Moments later, okay. New York put their shoulder in, boning Waka on the ground. Oh, this, this could be a huge moment in the game. Nobody likes to see anyone injured but right now if you're a free jacks fan that man in particular he's put all 16 points on the board so to have him on the ground with seven minutes to go in your eastern conference final is not a good position to be in right now it's going to be too much for new england to come back to score eight points with the clock ticking down four three two one andy ellis kicks it for the touch line and that is it it's one of the greatest days in New York franchise history. A moment to savor for everyone involved. They've produced enough to defeat the arch rivals New England away from home. There's a lot of pain that goes into you know, what, what you experience having prepared so much uh, for that season and come, getting to that last game and kind of tripping up at the final hurdle. Last year didn't end great for us. We had such a good run. Our hopes were all high, we were full of confidence. Yeah, we just fell short. I think a lot of people expected us to win. And I think a lot of people expected, like, within the team to win. And right after, well, everyone was pretty upset about it. I just think there's a lot of motivation for this year and a lot of guys coming back, I think. Take whatever time you need to get over this, okay? Whether it's far, do your thing, but once you finish, get around each other. We spoke about love, we spoke about care, it stays. It doesn't change. The memory you'll remember, all is not lost. It's that one hour next year and get excited for that shit. I've got some put it in today. Happy days? Yeah, good work. Uh, for me, I, I just don't think we were ready for that yet. I, don't th I, think, I think from a leadership perspective, from a game management perspective, I, I just think we were a team that was still building. And uh, we probably, it probably came too early for us, I think, is when we look back. It hurts, but I think it came too early for us. Enjoy it, boys. <laughs> look up for my man Wax. Yeah. 48 hours. <laughs> Get this weird feeling out of your voice, just enjoy it. I think you take a lot of uh, learnings from, I suppose, where, where, where we tripped up in the end. And I think our mindset was, was really a, a, aligned around having greater depth and being a team that has a bit more variation in our game. Uh, I felt that we were really, I think it was always the plan last year to be really an effective team. I think year two, create more depth, 
be a bit more progressive in how we play, add a few more things. And I think that's really the biggest thing for us is to prove that we can be a sustainable force in this competition. And that's what it's ever been. And we've always been about, you know, not just building a team, but building a club. And building a club means sustainable uh, success, being sustainably competing for, for, for championships every year, being in the conversation. A big effort went into building out the depth of our playing group, um, which you've seen this year. I think we've got a really well-rounded group of players here. And then same with the staffing unit too. So in regard to our S&C department, physical performance, it's an area where we can get so much pay just with consistent um, systems week to week and really maximising the efforts and what we're able to get out, out of our player group. I think we've, we've built a really broad base of, of things we want to get through in pre-season which was different to last year and I think it, it, it's, it puts us on a path that uh, more we can do this year with that. I know for a few of you boys coming into the team this year like the boys who have been here before are really well connected and you probably feel oh man this is a bit like, you know, there's quite a lot of you probably thinking, oh, this is a bit different to what I'm used to. But it's all based on an acceptance of who you are, right? So the more that we can get to know you quickly, the better. And so that's being open and honest and vulnerable about things that you're enjoying, not enjoying, who you are, where you're from. In New Zealand too, it's your papa, like who, where your roots are. But that's, what, that's what I want to, like, I don't really want to talk to you about rugby. I'm, I'm really interested in getting to know you as a person first day. And, once we have that connection, then we're sweet because we'll go out there and die for each other. Last year. We were so happy with how we were going. We won 10 games in a row, MLR record. We qualified for a conference final a couple of weeks uh, before the conference final. We kind of stumbled at the last little hurdle there. And um, people were generally pretty okay with it. Probably myself included, like, oh yeah, good season, boys. And then I thought about it, and I'm like, no, nah, actually, man, that's not what this place is built on. None of our fans were happy with it. I'm pretty sure our owners weren't happy with it. But we were all kind of like, oh, it's, it's okay, boys, we had a great year, you know, like conference finalists, made the playoffs for the first time, set a new record, there were lots of cool achievements. But we missed the main piece, which is winning is in our DNA. So we have to change that mentality, man. Like, we have to be, we have to buy into every other professional sports team in Boston that our DNA is winning shit. Okay, and that, with that comes a bit of pressure and obligation. Let's just own that and walk towards it, eh? I think just the culture itself in Boston, just like you win or you don't do anything at all, like it's win or bust every year, no matter how bad or good teams are expected to be. Um, I think that's like kind of the standard we're, we're trying to set with the Free Jacks and like the fans are kind of putting that on us. And I think the players as are as well, just to like need to win, just like the probably one of our main priorities um, to win or bust. And I think no one strives for anything less than winning an MLR Shield. I thought it was most applicable to invite someone who's got a ring on the Red Sox World Series win. Oh what I felt in 2018 when I was with the Red Sox right in spring training, we knew we were gonna win the World Series. Like we knew we were going to win it, like right from the start. And I think it was from culture. I think it was from who we had with us. I think it was from leadership. And I think with this team, I see the same thing right from the start. Like you can go to the dance with a hot girl, but if you don't dance with her, it sucks, right? So, and that's kind of what we did last year. We went there and we went to the playoffs. And that was great. But like this year, we don't want to go to the MLR championship. Like we want to go there and win it. Welcome to New Orleans. A new MLR season has arrived. Our season kicks off with the Nola Gold hosting the New England Free Jacks. We are Boston boys. We have a very clear understanding of who we are and what makes, makes things work. If we align to that, we are flipping direct. We know we need to be tug ready, but we are direct. We stick to our kicking game because that's we're going to put pressure, defense, raid, kicking game, stay in, that, stay in that game, be patient with that game, and live off their mistakes and free all the shit out of them. And that's, that's who we are. The wait is over, folks. We are underway. Yeah, they're mauling it. Yeah, they're going to push it over. They, they can't stop them. And that's it. Three minutes into your first MLR game here at the gold mine for the 2023 season, and the Free Jacks make a statement. But I think scoring in the first three minutes against Nola in Nola, first game of the year, just it's good for the energy of the team. Um, kind of get gets guys to unwind a little bit and express themselves on the field because we do have that bit of separation on the scoreboard. Trying to get that ball free. Poland digs it out. Over it goes. 
He's got room. He'll take it himself. And another try. New England is rewarded with that final try to go into the half. We went down to Nola for the first round and we able to get a win. Um, I think that was always good for just the, the group um, being able to play their first game together, to get out of our indoor bubble that we have, that we were training in throughout preseason, to get outside. I think the following week, um, we went out to San Diego on a, a cross country trip and played a very tough, physical, strong San Diego team. And I think um, we fell short and we knew that. Some guys, uh, they said from that loss, we're, we're hurting a bit. You know, I think, like I said, talk about expectations. They were probably a bit high and we, you know, probably got to us a little bit. So. You know, to have a bye week, then going into your first home game is, is perfect for us. I think it builds up the excitement for the home opener being on the bye week and, um, and having those two away games. I think kind of the buzz in the city, you're walking through Quincy Commons and be everyone, you know, even the cops are honking. You're like, oh, cop honks, what's going on? And they're like, hey, see you Saturday. Like, so there's there's an excitement around it, which is which is quite unique. I think the marketing team, our social teams have done a great job kind of marketing it and, and making it an actual festival rather than just a game. We see rugby, sports in general, but really rugby as a perfect tool to bring communities together. And music is a part of that, good food is a part of that, good drinks are a part of that. Bringing the community together to have those experiences together. Watch Awesome Rugby, having community rugby going on all day so that people can see that pathway and have that experience together. I think that's really, really cool. There'll be a lot of people here today who hadn't experienced rugby two years ago. We're just big rugby fans, right? Whether it's Six Nations game, we were watching that in the morning during our uh, mobility and our activation and stuff versus club rugby in, in Boston. Like, there's rugby on, we'll watch it. And I think it speaks to the rugby community in general in the area that guys are, are braving the cold in, in early March just to play a club rugby game, to put, put their bodies on the line for the Heritage Cup. So I think that just sort of validates that, that Massachusetts and Boston and Quincy are big big rugby communities and those are the guys and girls that ultimately come to our games and support and that's that passionate fan base that we have so I want to return the favor and, and get to to support them when we can. There's this, this real sense of energy and, and excitement before a game. Eh? And I think that speaks to the, the, the entire organization and you get to feel that when you come to the ground and especially here when the fans are locked and loaded in like they are as expectant and as excited as, as the players. It's so good for the players. I think they just just, just build off that tail, eh, just uh, feed off that, I guess. I think the talking's done, eh? Like, I reckon it's just time, time to get stuck in there. Uh, you just keep it simple out there. You can enjoy it, eh? Like, Boston's dished up by a proper St. Paddy's Day uh, temperature for us. Okay, so enjoy the weather, enjoy it out there. There's gonna be a bumper crowd. It's flipping an awesome moment for us. We've got shit uh, wrongs to right this day. Remember the uh, key message, charge the amount. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm pretty excited to, to get there. All right, enjoy it. We talked all week, like probably for two weeks, honestly, about the, the forecast being uh, not the, uh, the loveliest um, with some rain, some snow expected. And so wasn't wasn't really sure what to expect, whether people might stay home and wait for a warmer game, um, or or what would be the case. But just like from when we pulled up, walking down the uh, the steps into Veterans, there's a huge crowd. Even sort of multiple hours before the game, the beer garden was pumping. Nice boys. It's not too bad, eh? Chilly day. The Heritage uniforms for the Free Jacks here honoring St. Paddy's Day coming up. Going the fourth, baby. The first home game of this season in 2023 underway for the Free Jack. To Satala. Now works the outside. Beautifully timed kick into the corner. And a try. Brown, we're not troubled here, eh, boys? Good, boys. Hey, we're going anywhere until they got a penalty. Patras. Fly half from New Zealand, trying to create. Pass goes to the outside here. Malakana. The Free Jacks answer. Paola Malakana. 
What a sequence from this free jack side. Watch this footwork here from their number seven, Johnson. Look at that footwork to step Olamo to the outside and then put away Malakana. I mean, that was sensational, sensational footwork. From the kickoff, this free jacks team was determined to get back into this game. Great response, boys. Great response, eh? That's it. Nice one, huh? Well, you know, nice. Way to see the space, huh? Nice. The way we scored our tries and the tries themselves were awesome tries and um, kind of suit our game model off transition and, and broken play. So it was good to see that. On the flip side, I think our discipline was too poor yesterday. I think we handed DC some easy points. Hey, 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 hey! Hey, 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 hey! You don't need to be running in. We're good, we're good. We're good, we're good. We're good, boys. You talk a lot of shit, eh? Out of the hydration break. Yeah, we're going to out. Zero in play. We have an injury. Speaking of brutal, that's Josh Larson. That looks like he's in quite a bit of pain. Ground there. Powerful player shaking up. It'll be a big loss for the Free Jacks if he can't come back here. Really tough to see Josh go down, uh, especially on his 50th cap um, and our captain. And, you know, I think when he went down, I didn't realize how bad it was initially and um, kind of was just looking around to see who would step up. And, you know, kind of we have a leadership group and there's a few of us in there. And I just figured that um, it, it might be right for me to, to take lead into the game yesterday. Who's who's trying to ref now? Uh, Will you chat to the ref? No, no, no. Your body, bro. I'll do it. Oh. Derek. I think it's always a bit tough as a winger, being the captain, trying to get those comms into the ref or getting comms in. But, um, you know, love being able to, to lead the boys yesterday. Obviously, tough for Josh, and hopefully he'll be back soon. Beautifully done to Vanderbank, who's got the speed. The five meter. The offload. Awesome work. Keep it up, bud. Unreal. Yes! Oh. And it's toward the end of our first half here today in suburban Boston. McDonald. Good passing. Five more. What a line from Ben Lesage. And how about this? They're playing shorthanded at the final, in the final seconds of this first half. That is one of the best tries you'll ever see, I'm telling you right now. But watch this line from Lesage. Changes his angle, splits one, two, three, four white jerseys. That's a Canadian international star right there. Let's eyes up, get a breath, and then that'll be half boys, and we're into the locker room. That's how we can get through our work ons and stuff, right? In. We had just sort of gone up by sort of just over two scores, eight points maybe, right at the end of halftime there. And we came out, we knew the next score was going to be important. We got that next score. We want to be teams that like, Game should be over at that point. Really be clinical, put teams away. Charging upfield. Called Rody with speed. And a teammate. Poland. Dots it down for five. It's a try for the Free Jackson, John Poland. And John Poland doing what he does best, just following hot from the inside. Love seeing number nines do that. They're always in support, they're always there on the inside. But what a start for this Free Jack side in this second half. But we, we sort of gave DC the chance to get back in, tie the game, and made it hard for ourselves in that last final quarter there. To finish us off here, 20 minutes left. Let's put in a 20 minute shift that we can all bank our heads on at the end of this and enjoy our Saturday, all right? Here we go. Old Glory DC wants to keep that ball away from the turf. One last pass, a knockdown. And it's in. The Free Jacks tally and get five more. Incredible action that just kept on going. Oh, it's nice. Nice. Nice, Keezy. Nice. Patras, kick blocked. Looking for the corner. The loose change comes right to him and a whistle stops playing. 
New England be kicking themselves right now. Jesse Peretti upgraded to a red card now. That's his second yellow of the game. And as he's been off the field, DC has scored three tries. So in a matter of 90 seconds, New England had a penalty right in front of the post, could have closed this game out, kept DC with no points. All of a sudden now, DC is going to walk out of here with two table points. Oh, right, Free Jacks, let's go just clap the fans, eh? Let's get a quick clap to the fans, and then we can bind up, break it down. Pretty crazy, because last year it snowed in the first game too, and there was nobody there. <laughs> so uh, having all those fans there, um, especially with the weather and everything, was, was really cool to see. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks guys, thanks guys, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. What? <laughs> for a few beers. <laughs> that was our most uh, ticket sales ever. <laughs> In attendance of just over 3,300 here to uh, cheer you on. And there was a new crowd. And I think you guys saw that. There was a lot of people who hadn't experienced rugby before. And so our job on and off the field is to educate them on the values of this game, the experience to be had, and how fun this game is, and the camaraderie that it, that it brings. And so well done, everybody off the field who, who was part of that, and certainly on the field, you carried the brand forward. And that was great to see, and it was a great start to what can be an amazing and epic season ahead. Connor Keyes is upstairs. He's right outside the kitchen. Um, and then Ben Lesage is in the basement with me. And no, it's honestly been awesome. We've been gelling. Heat's a little too high, but we don't know what the issue is because we always got the heat off and it's about 51 degrees in the house. It's 10 degrees Celsius. Like, it's, it is cold. So we're saying who runs the house and who is the bottom. 